and welcome to the Fancy News Show from the Bottled Imp. My name is Ken Boiter and this is your weekly fix of Fancy News. On this week's show, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Of course you are. Yes, the second trailer for the film is now online. Win your copy of the hotly anticipated game Pandemic, Reign of Cthulhu. And you can meet some of your fantasy and sci-fi and horror stars at the MCM London Comic Con. But first, the 2016 nominees for the David Gemmell Award for Fantasy have been announced. It's the eighth year that they've run these awards and they try to recognise and promote writers and artists in the fantasy genre. Obviously, David Gemmell being a, a brilliant fantasy writer. There are three categories, and I will go through them now. One of which is the Morning Star Award for the best debut fantasy novel in English the Ravenheart Award for Best Fancy Cover Art, and also the Legend Award for Best Fancy Novel. With the David Gemmell Awards, you can choose the winners. Yes, you can vote on the long list for your favourite in all of these categories. And as I say, there's a long list, and you can choose. What you do is you just go online, and it's the GemmellAwards.com, and you can find further details of how to vote. Basically, you just click on the name that you want to vote next to and press submit as far as I can tell um, but yeah as I say you can go online and vote and the closing date for doing that is midnight that's GMT time and that's Friday the 24th of June the winners from the Bram Stoker Award 2016 have been announced the Horror Writers Association have announced their winners at their first convention which is called StokerCon and that happened last week in Las Vegas there are 16 categories of which I'll just tell you a few. The superior achievement in a novel was won by Paula Tremblay for A Head Full of Ghosts. And superior achievement in a graphic novel was won by Sam Weller, Mort Castle, Chris Ryle, and Carlos Gusman for Shadow Show, Stories of Ray Bradbury, not easy to say. And Superior Achievement in a Screenplay was won by Rob, uh, David Robert Mitchell for It Follows by Northern Light Films, with the Lifetime Achievement Awards going to Alan Moore and George A. Romano. M Romero. I know how to pronounce that. <laughs> you can see the full list of categories and winners by visiting stokercon2016.horror.org and we will be putting all of these links in the description of this episode. The second Ghostbusters trailer is online right now. Sony Pictures have released their second trailer uh, because they've actually already released a teaser trailer. And as you can probably guess, the second one is longer, so you can see more of what the film has to offer. Now, I did hear, and you probably read some grumblings about the teaser trailer. It seemed like people weren't too that impressed by it. There was more thumbs down than there were thumbs up. And I was a bit surprised because I actually quite liked the teaser trailer. It looked funny. It seemed to have a good mix of humour and drama. Um, but hey, I'm just hoping that, you know, the film is good. And the second trailer does make the film look a lot better, I guess, from, from the first teaser trailer. So I'm hoping that, you know, people's minds will be changed on this. You know, give it a chance. I always think, you know, yes, you can judge from trailers. But until you actually see the film or you read the book or play the board game, you don't actually know until you actually experience it. The film stars Melissa McCarthy, Kirsten Wig, Kate McKinnon, Leslie Jones, and is directed by Paul Feig. The film is due out on the 15th of July this year, and you can see the trailer at ghostbusters.com. The first glimpse of Disney's live action film Beauty and the Beast can now be seen online as well. Yes, Disney have released their first trailer, it's their little teaser trailer for the classic fantasy musical. Stars Emma Watson as Belle, Ewan McGregor as Lumiere and Dan Stevens as the Beast. And the film is a live action adaptation of the 1991 Disney classic. Uh, which is based on the fairy tale of the same name by Jean-Marie Le Prince de Belmont, oh, that's not badly pronounced, is it, eh? in 1756, which itself was actually an abridged and rewritten version of the original, which is a lengthier work, by French novelist Gabrielle Suzanne Barbot de Villiers. 
<laughs> look it up. Um, and that was published in 1740. So the story is a classic. It's lasted, you know, for a story to last, you know, two, three hundred years, that's quite impressive. The film isn't out until March 2017, so you've got just under a year to wait. But I'm sure they're going to be putting out loads and loads of trailers as and when. You can find out more and you can view the two as a trailer at movies.disney.co.uk. You can win your very own copy of Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. Z-Man Games will be demonstrating their much-anticipated Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu at the UK Games Expo, which runs from the 3rd to the 5th of June in Birmingham at the NEC Centre. It's based on the hit game Pandemic, which is all about medical and uh, medical Euro to do with <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Uh, outbreaks, that's it. Diseases outbreak all over the world, and you're a medical team and you work cooperatively to try and suppress them. Well, what they've done is they've given it a Cthulhu makeover, so you are actually trying to seal portals all over New England fictional towns of Arkham, Dunwich, Dunwich, Innsmouth, and Kingsport. And you can win your copy by simply going to UK Games Expo, going to the merchandise stand, which is A3, and you have to answer a question and then buy a ticket. I think you can buy more than one ticket. They're £3 a go. And then you just simply attend the raffle, which is at 4pm on Friday and the Saturday, and 2.45pm on the Sunday on the main stage. You can find out more about the competition and about the UK Games if you visit their website, which is ukgamesexpo.co.uk. The first of two MCM London Comic Cons is happening at the end of May. This is a multi-genre uh, fan convention. It mainly focuses on anime, manga, video games, sci-fi and fantasy, and there's quite a lot of cosplay that goes on there as well. There is a lot of other things going on where they have TV and film stars where you can have your auto you can buy their autograph, you can also have a picture taken with them. And I believe there are panels where they, you know, you've got QA sessions going on. There's cosplayers I say, and they do have a huge area for the comic village where obviously professionals and amateurs can sell you their comics. There are fantasy related guests there, including Warwick Davis of Willow and the Harry Potter series. There's also Tom Milson, Neil Jackson and John Noble of the TV series Sleepy Hollow. Plus there are two stars from the TV show Arrow and they are Willa Holland and Katrina Law. They're going to be there. Plus there are a few actors from the Game of Thrones series. It all takes place at the XL Exhibition Centre in London and it runs from Friday the 27th, of sun, uh, Friday the 27th to Sunday the 29th of May. I was getting ahead of myself there. And there are still tickets available. It's, it's almost sold out, but there are still some tickets available. So you can visit their website, which is mcmcomiccon.com. Kickstarter news. The League of Ancient Defenders, or LOAD, as it's shortened to, is a two-team, two-to-six-player skirmish board game that pits the armies of Chaos and Atlantis against one another. It's a player-versus-player, or PvP, and it's a miniatures board game that's modelled after loads of those Battle Arena online games, so they're bringing it to the board game. Players must use their hero's unique abilities as they push on three lanes of attacking, and they all attack simultaneously towards the opposing faction's you know, area. And what you do is you basically you're trying to destroy key enemy uh, objectives, towers, and spawn points, and then you're forcing the opponent back in, you know, to retreat and ultimately give up. The illustrations do look beautiful and it does look, you know, the little miniatures look really visually stunning. There's lots of these miniatures as well. It does look well designed. There's plenty of detailed images of how the game plays and obviously of the minis. There's also a full cover PDF of the rules so you can see how the game plays. And they have unlocked lots of stretch goals as well. There's more details. They do have their own website, which is loadboardgames.com. And it's already funded. It finishes on the 8th of June. Crystal Hall is a two to four player board game where it's a race to extract the powerful crystals. This is a tile flipping game where players are trying to discover four powerful crystals that are hidden amongst 36 face down tiles. But there is a twist, obviously. Also hidden amongst these tiles are dangerous things like cauldrons, potions, curses, and even enchanted swamps to delay your exploring. And there's another slight twist because each player is a wizard or a witch and you have various magical spells that you can, you know, cast on other people to slow them down, maybe change them into a toad, I don't know. Um, 
And it does look a fun, simple game that seems to have a changing setup each time because you randomise the tiles and obviously you're going to get different combination of spells. So, you know, you, there should be a good lot of playability with this game. And they do say it takes about half an hour to 45 minutes. So, you know, it's a quick kind of, you know, nice sort of satisfying game in that respect. They do have a number of stretch goals to unlock and they have a rules all the detail there of the rules and a video of how to play the game as well and that finishes on the 10th of July. One Deck Dungeon is a one to two player dungeon crawl game from Asmodee Games. Players choose which of the four heroes to take into a dungeon where you will roll dice, bash down doors and obviously fight various creatures and they have some big scary boss monsters as well. Uh, the game has a, it does have a nice cool mechanic in it where it utilises various cards in four different ways, depending on where you place it on your character sheet. So it can be used as an encounter, XP, skill or a potion, or a stat-boosting item. So that's quite a clever little mechanic, that. Another thing to note is that the artwork does show four female heroes, which is, you know, quite unusual to have four female heroes. And... You'll be glad to know that they actually are dressed in proper kind of warrior style clothing befitting if, if you're going to go in, into a dungeon and try and loot it and fight monsters. So that is a step forward, I believe. And you, they do also have a print and play version where it's, they've got a colour PDF that you can download that, print it off yourself and see how it plays, which I think is an excellent idea. I do stress though that that's not the final game and so obviously you might find mistakes or you might find a few kind of things that don't quite work out but you have been warned. It's already funded and it does finish on the 9th of June. Bottled Imp News. I've recently finished filming my second episode for the comedy web drama Match Not Found. I appeared in episode two, uh, sorry, episode 21 of series two, which was called Roll of the Dice as Jeffrey, who is one of Clark's Dungeons and Dragons friends. This time, Jeffrey is helping out at Clark's book launch with varying success, obviously. The episode is number 30, and you can catch it on YouTube on the 1st of July. And you can catch Bottled Imp illustrator and Grimace Ironblood illustrator Rich Nunn on BBC Kent Radio. He's also known as the Artful Doodler, so you can Google that and search for him there. Rich was interviewed by Dominic King on his radio drive time show. And Rich talks about what it's like to be a caricaturist and illustrator and the, the perils and the pleasures of that. And he also does a few caricatures of the presenters while he's doing that. You can hear Rich, he, that was on the 21st of May, which is a Wednesday, and it's about a three hour show, but he starts at about two hours, 24 minutes in, and you can go to the iPlayer to catch that. And they've also videoed it, because they have some little webcams, and that's on the BBC Kent Facebook page. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have time for. Well, don't remember that, remember this our website which is www.thebottledimp.com we're also on facebook and all the usual social stuff so please like share and spread the word of the bottled imp until next time remember keep it unreal